Hello and welcome back to another Barn Automotive YouTube video. And in this episode, we start on the LS3 engine installation along with the automatic transmission. Now I start by dry running everything outside the car. So that is plugging the entire wire and lumen, making sure that I have all the correct sensors in the right places before I then move on to the installation in the car. And that way I can also make a good plan for where I'm gonna run all the wires to tuck them away so that it's not obvious and a mess in the engine bay. So let's cut to the work. Okay, so that is everything plugged in sensor-wise for the engine. This here is accelerator pedal, OBD, and ignition wiring. Then we have here, this is the fuse box, and then your ECU is there. With all the plugs plugged in and everything laid out, um, I'll now move on to the sensors, the new sensors that I'll be using as it's having a LCD uh, dial screen instead of the old like analog style. It will need some different sensors in order for that to read like temperature, sen uh, coolant temperature and oil pressure and some other bits. So I've already installed the different temperature sensor coolant temperature sensor. And in my hand here, I have the oil pressure sensor. Um, this will go in down here, your oil filters here, then there's a blanking plate that I can remove and I'll install this and that will give us the oil pressure reading for the gauges. I finished up on the installation of those sensors that weren't GM standard, so that they're compatible with the LCD screen. And there wasn't really anything spectacular to show you there. And now I have moved on to the installation of the gearbox to the back of the engine. So what I've done now is lifted the engine, moved it back enough in the cradle to be able to get in here. And then uh, just supported it at the back with the engine crane again so that it's not tipping. And now I can get to the bolts that bolt the flex plate to the torque converter. And then to get to each one, I just use the bar on the front on the pulley, on the crank pulley, and then uh, rotate it round. So that I can get to each of the fixings. With the gearbox attached to the back of the engine, you can move on to hoisting the entire setup and then lowering it into the engine bay. Okay, so now that I have the engine kind of placed in, it's not really placed in, it's just like lowered in, um, I can put the 
connect the transfer case to the rear um, because that is the main area that the uh, you've got two fixing points from there to fix it to the chassis and then a cross member that will go to the gearbox. Um, it's just too much weight on one end to put it in with the transfer case attached first. So I will attach the transfer case, then jack up the rear um, of the transmission and transfer case so that that's uh, in the correct position to be bolted. And then I'll have this in the correct position that way, um, front to back, and then it's just leveling it height wise. Um, and then I can tack the engine mounts and then remove the engine again once they're tacked in place. Um, so yeah, this will just be time-lapse work. This is a transfer case now attached to the back of the gearbox. So what I will do from here is uh, jack the back of this up. And as I jack this up and I let the front down, because the front hanger on angle, it will push itself further back into the bay or into the recess here. And then I need to come another yeah, five inches further back. And then I can uh, mount this in place. And then that will be the right distance into the back of the engine bay for the engine. And then I just need to set the height at the front. Transfer case is bolted at the back. We're at the right position uh, with the engine. It's taken a little while to get it uh, level and in the center. Um, but now, so I have the engine mounts down here uh, and on this side. What I will do now is uh, tack them in place with the engine here. Uh, and then I will need to pull everything back out. So everything that I've just done, undo it, pull it all back out, weld the uh, supports in completely the whole way around, and then put everything back in. And it can be mounted uh, for the last time. But before I then put it back in, there's still some cabling that I can pull out um, that doesn't need to be there anymore and then uh, have a general clean up of the engine bay because once this is back in, there's gonna be some parts that I'm not gonna be able to reach anymore. So then I will uh, wash and clean everything down for the final time as well. And then, yeah, the engine can go back in. So uh, almost there with the engine install. The engine is now in place. I think I removed and installed it three times total because I wasn't really happy with how it was sitting. Um, it needs to be kind of three degrees uh, off level so that you get the oil to all the right places. Um, so we have that now, it's sitting good. Um, I wasn't happy with how much space we have between the back of the radiator that's now installed because this thing is huge for a radiator and it has two big fans on the back to make sure we have extensive cooling. Um, so I kind of shoved everything back a little bit so that you could still access like your belt tensioner that if you need to do any service work or maintenance, it's kind of doable without removing everything out the front and draining all the cooling every time. And so I wanted to make sure it was good, good and not just throwing it in and leaving it. So that was quite, quite a lot of work that I didn't capture because I just wanted to get on with it. Um, but that is done. Uh, I'll show you. This is where we're at now. There's some pipes that I can tidy up a little bit to make it look cleaner, but it's not a show setup. So most cars you'll see with the V8, they won't have the heating pipes running and we still have to have the AC pipes going back there. Most of them aren't running it. They're on like a T05 setup and either have to do an aftermarket system and we have the heating and AC already here so we're kind of dictated where we're running it because 
it's there where we have to run it to. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much where it's at now. Like I said, some wires and things that can be tucked away better. And that will be the last thing that I do. Here you can see how big the radiator is. Again, we don't have much room. There's more room than it looks there. That's because you've got the intake in the way and this pipe in the way. So you do have room there, but we're in. And so that is it for this video. And because I'm still waiting on the one coolant pipe, I won't be starting it now. So in the next video, I'll be showing you the full custom stainless steel exhaust installation, along with starting this bad boy for the very first time. And we'll probably get some other bits on the car, like the winch bumper and maybe the wide body arches, maybe the wheels, if they finally arrive from customs, we can put them on and that will completely transform the car. So I hope you enjoyed this one and make sure you tune into the next one to hear how this crazy V8 will sound.